there. Let's talk about TV and movies. <laughs> so I am pretending again to be recording from my um, game room, but you know, it's my green screen and all that jazz, but just thought I'd, you know, try something different. Um, you know, it's a, it's a couple of months in between these, have you seen these videos? So it's always me basically catching up on different things that I've seen. Um, I don't always remember everything that I've been watching, but I try to keep a list so that um, it's somewhat in order. And so, um, yeah, let's see what I've been seeing. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna start with, I guess, um, the one um, movie that I saw in a theater uh, right before the holidays and looking back on it now, <laughs> I wish I hadn't done it. Like, I'm glad I saw it in the theater, but like right now I am barely leaving my house. I mean, literally I um, cover my face to walk my dog around the neighborhood and I avoid people and I don't go anywhere. I'm working from home, socializing from home, doing everything from home. And the idea of going to a movie theater right now is just like, uh -uh. <laughs> but I did see Spider-Man No Way Home in the theater, like I said, right before the, um, um, winter holiday. And so it was really good. Um, I'm not, you know, going to sit here and pretend to be like the biggest um, MCU fangirl, but I do enjoy all the MCU movies. I even enjoy the, um, you know, <laughs> DC movies that aren't always so great, but because I'm into like geek culture and stuff, I even enjoy those movies. But I really enjoyed this Spider-Man movie. I mean, it was... I don't, I have I've heard a lot of people say that it is the best Spider-Man movie. And I don't know if it's the best Spider-Man movie, but it is really, really up there. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's everything that's going on now, bringing in stuff from the past, bringing in the whole multiverse thing. I mean, the way they did it is like, there are so many times where they could have totally just ruined it. <laughs> but they didn't. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like the movie is perfect. Anybody who wants to find flaws can find flaws. So don't, don't, I'm not trying to make it seem like it's perfect in every possible way, but it's pretty darn close in terms of the way that they put this story together. Um, I mean, come on, you have di people from different movie studios coming together to make this movie happen. And that doesn't happen a whole lot because people are greedy. And so I just, it was really good. So if you haven't seen Spider-Man No Way Home, if you're waiting to get it on streaming, I know some people are able to like pre-order it and stuff like that. It's totally worth seeing. So, I mean, if you're a Spider-Man fan and you haven't seen that, I'm sorry, you need to see it. Um, if you're not a Spider-Man fan, then, you know, take your time. It's okay. But <laughs> it's a really good movie. I mean, it was, I don't know if it was worth risking my health to go out and see it in but, you know, it, I don't think it was as bad then as it is now. I mean, it's getting better now. I'm rambling. It's a good movie. So that was the one thing that I saw outside of my home. Everything else, st st streaming, baby, streaming. So let's see. Let's start with the Hulu app. Um, there's a show on it called Queens, and it's about... Um, a girl rap group from the 90s making a comeback and it's a really like high drama show and I don't love it but I really like the idea of it so I'm watching it um when I first started watching it I didn't realize I thought it was like a limited series I didn't realize it was like a regular thing like it's on television I don't know what channel it comes on on the television but I watch it through Hulu so I was um shocked when I thought I had gotten to the end and then like the next week another episode popped up and I was like oh this is like an ongoing current series this is how out of touch I am with things on people I just you know I just anyway so um if you like really like high drama type shows and you happen to be a fan of hip-hop or music you could probably get into this show um like I said it's not my favorite but I really like the idea the concept of you know having the a drama around um this particular part of the music industry i know they've done other dramatic shows um like empire and stuff like that but
but I don't know, for some reason, I just, I like the way, like the concept of this and how they're trying to approach it. I don't like everything about the show, but I like it enough to say, if you want to try something different, then try it. I mean, so, I mean, it's, I, for me, I think it's a really good, um, opportunity to see, you know, um, hip hop in a, in a way that maybe most people don't see hip hop and to see like strong female characters, they're clearly flawed, but, you know, but working through the industry and pointing out a lot of the issues with the hip hop industry, but still, you know, um, praising it for the wonderful like musical genre that it is. So anyway, if you are at all interested in Queens, um, I don't, can't remember what, like I said, it's on like regular like network television. I don't remember. I don't know if it's like Fox or what. I don't have no idea what it comes on on regular television. I don't have regular television. I have Hulu and I know it comes on Hulu. All right. So the next thing on Hulu, I don't remember. I don't know if I mentioned when I watched season one of Lego Masters, but me and my husband, we just finished season two of Lego Masters, and it was really good. The challenges that they gave these people in season two was just like out there. I mean, it's it's easy to watch as a spectator at home and say, why did they do this? Or why didn't they do that? I can't believe this happened. I can't believe, because the fact of the matter is, I am not a Lego builder. So I'm not comparing, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not like these stupid people who think they can kick, you know, 50 yard field goals and they're yelling at football players on the TV. Like I'm not, I'm not that delusional, but I know the fact that, you know, if I was going to go on to a competition show like that, I would, I would try to make sure I was prepared. And I feel like some of the people who showed up for season two weren't that prepared, but the ones who made it to the end totally deserve to make it to the end. Like it was, it was so good to see these people make these amazing incredible things out of lego so it's a really fun show i mean it, it um it, it they try to make drama on the show but i mean it's it's probably one of the friendlier competition shows out there not as friendly as the show i'm going to talk about next but if you are just looking for something chill to watch that you know doesn't have a whole lot of drama but does have a competitive aspect to it and you're a kid at heart, check out Lego Masters. The next show that I watched on Hulu, which I, so <laughs> it's another competition type show, but it's, um, so this show, it is called Making It. And I don't know, again, what network the show originally aired on, but my husband and I watched season three on Hulu. And we couldn't understand why it was just season three, but we're like, hey, let's just, we need something to watch. Let's, let's watch season three. So after watching season three, we scoured all of our other like streaming platforms to see if we could find season one and two and we can't find it. So we don't know what that's all about. Maybe we have to figure out what um, network the show originally aired on and find out what happened to season one and two. It's out there somewhere, but who, who knows? So anyway, making it season three, um, again, just this whole competition of people creating things. And um, I feel like the people who showed up for the making it show were more compared, prepared, like they came ready to make stuff. And it was really cool. And they were so friendly and helpful. Like sometimes somebody would like finish their build and go help someone else. Like this is the type of competition show I can watch. Like these other types of competitions are not, I don't know, I am not a competitive person. I feel like other people in my family are highly competitive and I'm just like, I ain't got time for that. But I like watching competitive shows like these where there's a great creative element to it. It's not just people backstabbing or, you know, showing off their muscles like good for you. I don't know. That's fine if that's for you, but it's not for me. And that's okay either way. But I, I like these kinds of competition shows where you do get to see a little bit of camaraderie. And I really like it when you get to see creativity. Um, with that said, I don't really like cooking competition shows that much. That's not to say that I don't watch them. I have watched them. But some of them, I'm just like, there's just too much yelling going on in that kitchen. So anyway, those are the three um, shows that I've watched from... Um, now there's other stuff that I'm watching, but I'll talk about those once I finish them. 
So that was Hulu. Let's go to the Disney Plus app. Um, I just started watching one show, so I'm not really going to talk about it. I guess it's, it's a whale show, and I can't remember the name of it, but I will remember the name of it when I talk about it in another segment later on down the road. <laughs> um, I did finish the Hawkeye series, which was so much fun. Um, I like the fact that they gave you know Hawkeye a show because he's one of the characters that a lot of people who are really into like superpowers, um, he's one of those characters that people don't always like pay attention to. Like a lot of people, I feel like this whole idea of superheroes, I mean, we're talking about fictional characters, first of all. <laughs> but even in this world of fiction and fantasy, some people seem to think if you don't have a superpower, then you shouldn't be considered a superhero. So there's a lot of people who don't think Batman should be a superhero, even though he's one of the most popular superheroes like on the planet. You know, like culturally speaking, different cultures, whatever, lots of people love Batman, but then there's a group of people who don't think Batman should be considered a superhero because he doesn't actually have a superpower. Well, Hawkeye is like that as well. He doesn't have an actual superpower, but he has these incredible reflexes and he's a master archer and he's, you know, a pretty good detective. You know, he has other skills. And in the show, it actually talks about how he's not a hero because he has superpowers. He's a hero because he's willing to do whatever it takes to, you know, save someone's life. And that's what kind of defies him as a hero. And there's all kinds of shenanigans that happen. I know there are a couple of, I uh, saw a couple of little fan things where people were like, this show isn't really about Hawkeye. It's about this girl. Well, um, for those people who make comments like that, it's clear that they have not read the comic books because this is not some character that they made up for the show. She's a legit comic book character. She becomes Hawkeye. Like this show is kind of a, you know, TV rendition of a comic. Of course, you know, it can always change things for the MCU, but I mean, I just think it's so funny that people get so caught up in what they see in front of them, they never consider the source material. <laughs> um, so Kate Bishop isn't some made up, you know, character for this show. She was made up just like the other comic book characters were made up. I really enjoyed the Hawkeye show and bringing in Elena, the whole chemistry between Elena and Kate I'm so excited that I, you know, I've heard that they're going to do a Black Widow 2, and I think it's going to be the two of them teaming up, kind of like, um, I'm drawing a blank already. <laughs> oh my goodness, Sam and the other guy, I don't remember. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, oh well, don't worry about it. But I'm just excited about more team ups and stuff. Um, this Hawkeye show is going to have a spinoff called Echo and some other stuff going on. I really do like the fact that, you know, they were finally able to get all their stuff together and pull in characters from the Netflix shows. For a long time, they've been trying to pretend like these Netflix characters didn't exist because they were not part of the MCU or not canon or whatever. Well, we saw Murdoch in the Spider-Man movie and we saw Kingpin in the Hawkeye show. So it's all coming together. I hope they're able to continue with it and make it all work because that was one of the most exciting things I saw on television. Now, of course, if you're not into this kind of stuff, what I'm saying means nothing to you, but you know, it was awesome. All right. Let's see. What else um, am I watching on Disney Plus? Oh, yes. Um, I watched the movie Encanto. That was really great. It's been a long time since I've watched a Disney movie that had a bunch of songs in it that I really liked. Ah, uh, as I get older and older, the music in some of these movies, I'm just like, oh, come on, that's, that's too many songs or I'm not feeling this song, <laughs> you know, but I really like, I, I can't, I mean, I, I've only watched it once. So maybe if I watch it again, I'll know, but like, I really enjoyed the songs in Encanto. It was a pretty good story. Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> no complaints there. And then of course the book of Boba Fett. So now I actually haven't finished the book of Boba Fett because it's ongoing, but I've watched enough episodes where I feel like it's worth mentioning here. Um, just more in this whole Star Wars um, universe that D um, Disney is pulling off. Um, they have so much material to work with. And I think it's great that they are willing to go beyond just the scope of these you know cinematic releases that they're doing these tv shows i know 
I am so daggone ready for Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I guess I'm just going to have to continue waiting. And I'm fine with waiting because I have things like the Book of Boba Fett. Um, the last episode that I saw, I'm not going to give away a spoiler in case someone wants to watch show and isn't currently watching the What's Wrong With You, hurry up, get caught up. But the last episode where they introduced someone who we 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 were we thought they were going to bring them in, but to actually see them coming in, uh, I am so excited for what's going to be happening next. So book of Boba Fett, woohoo! Got to see more of that. So that is what I'm currently watching on the Disney Plus app. Um, HBO Max. Um, haven't spent a lot of time on HBO Max lately, but um, I did watch the Young Justice um, season felt like it ended kind of abruptly. I mean, I don't know if this was part one or part, like sometimes they'll release a season and like, oh, this is part one of this season. And then a couple months later, you get part two of that same season, or maybe the next season will continue. I don't know, but they have to continue the story just based on the way that it ended. So it was a really good, you know, season, especially if you're a fan of Young Gusses. So um, I did watch the uh, Matrix Resurrections movie and that was um I feel like that was kind of like the Bill and Ted movie they made the Matrix um, Res Resurrection movies uh, as a cash grab and for the fans like if you weren't already a fan of the Matrix you don't need to watch this movie um but if you have seen you know the Matrix movies and you feel nostalgic yeah check it out it was it was you know it was entertaining it wasn't a waste of my time but I mean it wasn't mind-blowing I don't think they did anything completely unexpected took a while to understand some some things in terms of like why some of the characters were like different ages and stuff like that but I mean it wasn't wasn't a big conundrum you know so I mean I enjoyed it for what it was um but yeah I think it was totally just a cash grab and something for the fans and sometimes it's okay to make a movie like that you know um I, I do hope that that's it <laughs> I hope they're not gonna try to do more with that if they do they're gonna have to try harder I mean like I said this movie wasn't bad but it was like kind of unnecessary like I said if you're a fan then you're like yeah that was oh, okay that was a good you know what's what's next no but <laughs> if they're gonna try to build off of this movie they have their work cut out for them so I'm hoping this is it for that um all right let's switch over to Prime so on Amazon Prime, I watched a show called Harlem. I heard it described as um, the Black Sex in the City. And I guess that's kind of a good description of it. Um, I mean, I think because um, Sex in the City was such an iconic show about these female friends living in New York, that that's where the comparison comes from. But these characters aren't um, entirely like the the characters from the other show. I mean, you do have one character who's really into fashion because she she runs a, a fashion boutique, but she's like socially conscious about her fashion and stuff like that. So fashion, I don't feel like is a major theme of this show the way it was the Sex in the City show, but that's not to say that they don't have some incredible fashion on this show. Um, I think it's amazing the, the way that the different characters in the show they dress, how the way they dress expresses themselves and all this kind of stuff. It's it's visually an amazing show and the storylines are pretty good. Again, you got to like drama um, to watch this show, which I I don't always get into drama, but because um, it is also funny, that helps. Some shows are just so dramatic that there's not a laugh cracked anywhere in like a two hour time period or whatever, but not like, but this show has some some laughs, um, some, some crack ups here and there. and um, yeah I mean I liked it it wasn't it wasn't a show that I feel like um I don't know I don't I don't really know what the pulse of the the people I don't know what people are into these days you know I feel like anyone who is resistance to any type of cultural change is not going to get into this show just because some people are like that they don't want to see anything that's not sex in the city with four white women <laughs> And that's not what this show is. So um, if you are open to something that's not Sex in the City with four white women, then you will maybe be able to get into the show. I, I like Sex and the City. I'm not downing it in any way whatsoever, but someone who is expecting this to be a regurgitation of that show is not gonna be happy with that. If you're willing to let this show be its own entity, you can really appreciate it. And so, yeah, um, 
if you're interested, check out Harlem. The other things that I've watched on Prime, Will of Time. Um, that show was a lot darker than I was expecting it to be. I didn't read the books clearly, which, you know, that's fine. I'm pretty sure people who have read the book have things that they want to comment and say about um, the show. I didn't read the book, but I did watch the show. Um, I liked it. Um, I'm very interested in watching the next season if they come out with another season. Um, but it was just, like I said, darker than I expected when I started watching it. And then um, realized just how dark and gory it was. I realized I have to watch this during the day and I cannot be eating when I watch it. <laughs> So, but other than that, pretty good stuff, um, intricate storyline. You know, it's funny, there was something that I saw in episode one that made me think, even though this looks like a show that's taking place like back in time and, you know, before like um, industry and, you know, electricity and all that kind of stuff, there was something that I saw, I don't remember what it was, but there was something that I saw in episode one that made me think, I think this world used to have electricity and stuff like that. And then once you get to the end, you see something else that maybe tells you maybe they did. So I don't I only like I said, I'm not watching these shows with as much depth and detail as I did when I was younger, because I just don't care as much as I used to. But I do feel like there was something there that lets us know that this world that looks like it's in the past is actually in the future. I'm again I'm trying not to give away spoilers. I don't know if what I'm saying is correct or incorrect. You know how these shows are nowadays. They can have multiple timelines happening and you'll find out someone you thought was someone's grandmother is actually their granddaughter. Who knows? But it was a good show. So whenever, if ever, they come out with season two, I'm there. And the last thing that I started watching, which I, and the reason why I'm talking about this now is because when I started watching it, I didn't realize I only had a limited amount of it to watch which is A Discovery of Witches. Now, this is a book series that I did read, absolutely adore. So um, when I had an opportunity to start watching the show, I was like, heck yeah, why not? I love that book. <laughs> um, and so it was um, a limited thing where I could only watch part of it. And I was like, what? I can't watch the rest of it. <laughs> so they were like, oh, take a free trial of this, whatever. And you can watch. And I'm like, sure, I'll do that. But the Free trial only went up to like the current episode but the show is still going I thought the show was complete I had no idea if I had known that I would have just waited until the whole thing was completed and then binged it but <laughs> that's on me so I guess I will be picking up with a discovery of which is in the summer to finish out the third season um but anyway it's really good if you have read the books I'm sure you have opinions about the show but considering all the stuff that they had to try to convey, I think they have done a really great job of sticking as close to the book as possible. I mean, when you're making a you know, movie or TV adaptation of a book, it's impossible to do it you know, word for word because that would take forever. But I think they've done a really good job with the way that they've hit the major points of the story and the plot and the characters. And I, I am enjoying it. I remember reading you know, the first, uh, the books in the series and the, the, the show is filmed kind of how the books are. Season one is book one, season two is book two. Season three so far seems to be season um, book three. That's the one I had to stop watching. But um, yeah, I really like it. So if you're interested in a discovery of witches, um, I would say check it out. Um, if you are like me and you don't want to have to get another app to finish it, wait till it's complete and then try free trial. I mean, I have so many streaming apps. I'm not about to get another one just for one show. Okay. So I realized that I have been talking for almost 30 minutes now, and I haven't even gotten to all the stuff that I watched on Netflix. So I am going to have to give you a rain check on that. Have you seen any of these things that I've talked about lately? I guess I will be recording another one of these sooner rather than later, so I can get you caught up on the things that I've been watching on Netflix. So there you have it. Um, being inside um, during COVID, I have had time to watch a lot of stuff, more than I'm used to having. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it is what it is. So um, if you want to recommend something, I might be able to check it out. Who knows? <laughs> um, let me know what you think about some of this stuff. And uh, yeah, you guys stay safe out there. Until next time. Bye.